Shalom to the nation of Israel. First and foremost, before I get into my lesson, I want to start off by giving all praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka HaKadash. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that teach in their Ruel today. And salutation also to the federal laborers that's in the ministry and the believers that scatter worldwide in all truth and sincerity day in and day out. Shalom. On the brother Shaquat Gabar. Um, coming at you with another lesson and right before I get into this lesson this message or the, all these videos goes out to you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans which we are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites according to the Bible and also to the Israelite foreigners that are scattered amongst the heathen nations and they may take on the typical appearance or physical appearance of another nation but if your bloodline goes back to Negro Latino or Native American descent by the seat of your father, you consider an Israelite as well. Shalom. Okay. Let me get into this lesson. All right. Uh, so um, basically, I'm just going to get into a um, quick lesson, which I, you know, got a couple of scriptures queued up. And, you know, the subject matter is going to be these other nations outside of Israel. Okay. When it comes to the heathens. Okay. In the near future, okay, they are going into captivity, okay. Because contrary to popular belief, start with um, you know, Christianity. They believe when it comes to the Bible, who the world called Christ, okay, which his name is Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew, meaning he is the deliverer, okay. Thinking that the Lord came and died, and was risen for all nations when it comes to salvation. Okay, which, you know, a lot of these Christians or your average individual don't know the understanding of salvation, man. Okay, when it comes to salvation, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, only came for uh, Israel. Okay, matter of fact. And at this time, the elect of the uh, nation of Israel, which were considered the 144,000 and the one third. Okay. This is Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, okay, in the Hebrew, for he shall save his people from their sins. So once again, Yahweh Shai is only coming back to deliver the nation of Israel, and at this time, starting with the elect. So if the Lord only coming back to save Israel, what does it mean for the other nations outside of Israel, okay, such as the Edomites, starting with them, as we in their current rulership at this time okay the so-called white race mainly start with the elites of esau edom okay the central bankers the illuminated one as they call themselves okay um and the other and the other nations man okay the heathens the original gentiles okay the chinese okay the japanese the arabs the original africans that go back to the sons a ham okay um on uh, uh, the hawaiians samoans okay all those heathen nations that's outside of israel their future is captivity once yahweh shai return okay to bring the deliverance after you know by the way of the, the chariots okay when it comes to the salvation of israel when i say the chariots going into the so-called ufos which are the vehicles of the angels and how Yahweh Shah is going to make his second coming at the peak of the Third World War. And simultaneously, this place, America, Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed by the way of thermonuclear fire. Okay? And the Lord is only going to deliver the elect at this time from out of this captivity. Because this is our current captivity here in America. And also where we're scattered at worldwide, the Lord is going to deliver the elect according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 through 31. Okay, but primary, the main deliverance is going to take place here from the shores of America. And according to Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8, two thirds of so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans at this time, they're going to be destroyed. Okay, by the up and coming judgment, okay, of this place. <clears throat> and they're going to have to come back in the kingdom, okay, being the sons and daughters of the elect, which is reincarnation. Okay. 
and the heathens that perish on this side or in this lifetime, they're gonna go, they're gonna come back in the kingdom, okay, being servants or lamest term, slaves, man. Okay, they're gonna go into captivity and they're gonna come back, okay, through the remaining um heathen nations that don't get destroyed by the way of the missiles, man. Okay. And once the kingdom is set up, okay, that's how it's gonna go. Cause eventually also as well, the land of Israel is going to be destroyed. Okay. When it comes to those phonies over there. Okay. We're still not the original Israelites. Okay. And once that land be destroyed, we're going to rightfully own our land again under the rule of Yahweh Bashim Shai, and also King David being set up as king as well. Okay. But right now the Lord is only dealing with the elect of the nation of Israel. So we coming in the time now of the transition of power, man. So let me get back to Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach. Okay, chapter 10. And I'm going to start off at verse 1. And it says, A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Okay? As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So right now, Esau Edom is in rulership. And we see the, the, the state of the earth, okay, how corrupt it is. Because Esau Edom is known as the wicked, right along with the rest of these heathen nations. And two-thirds of our people, that's not acknowledging the truth, okay, that the Lord going to bring judgment on. Yeah, but right now, Esau Edom is in power, man. Yeah, but now we come to the time of the transition when Yahweh shall return, okay? Because we're in the time now, Esau Edom trying to establish his NWO and eventually pushing the prophecy of Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, implementing the RFID micro, known as the Mark of the Beast or the MOTB, as we say, okay? But eventually, as they at their peak are trying to capitalize on the NWO, that's when Yahweh Bashim al Shah is going to intervene, okay? Let me get this real quick. But that's Job, Job chapter 5, verse 12. Job chapter 5, verse 12, he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And that's going to Esau Edom, okay? You know, they crafting this when it comes to the NWO. Eventually, Yahweh Shai is going to intervene and disappoint them, Okay? And these elites, they're going to escape um, uh, the damnation of the missiles, the nuclear missiles, or that nuclear war, as they're going to be in their retreats. But this is Job chapter 14, verse 5. His days are determined. The number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Yeah, because, you know, the Lord got a set time that they ain't going to be able to form or capitalize the NWO. Okay, they're going to get to a certain extent. Then the Lord going to... um. Yahweh Shah is going to intervene. Let me see. Um, Job chapter 20, verse 22. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in strays. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. Okay, the, the wicked going into these other nations. Okay, as you see in uproars of the people, as you see in the exposure of Esau, Edom, as they're trying to bring this NWO. And it's, you know, people are, you know, leaking or, you know, uh, exposing their, the NWO, okay, their agenda. Verse 23, and when he's about to fill his belly, Yahweh by Shemal Shai shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eaten. So at the point that they think they're going to have everything in control when it comes to the NWO and when it comes to them trying to stamp everybody. Eventually, the Lord going to intervene, okay? Because Yahweh Bashim was shy, um, ruler in the kingdom of men. Well, that's um, and these scriptures I ain't even really had, you know, bookmarked, man. So you know, it's all through the spirit. So what's that's um.
This is uh, Psalms chapter 75, verse um, 5. Lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. And that's what these elites of Esau Edom is doing, speaking with a stiff neck when it comes to this NWO. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Okay, so right now Esau Edom is set up. Okay, and these other, you know, hedonistic kingdoms as well. These superpowers. Okay. You know, you know Russia. Okay, which they're Edomites. Okay. Like I say, starting with America. Your European system. Okay, which all of them are Edomites. The state of, you know, the, the land of Israel. Edomites. Okay, but did you have these, the, you know, China, Japan, okay, all these nations that are ruling as we on the bottom, okay? Yeah, but now we're in the time the Lord about to put all these nations down, start with the Edomites and about to deliver the elect and another Yahweh Shai rulership, we about to reign, okay? Also that whole for number, okay, that we striving to be part of. But the point is that Yahweh Bashim al Shai um, ruleth when it comes to the, the kingdoms. So let me get back into Ecclesiasticus chapter 10, um, verse 3. And it says, And an unwise king destroy his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. And we're coming in the due time of Yahweh Shai. Okay, about the rain. Okay, which is by default the kingdom of Israel. I'm going to uh, jump down to verse 8. Um, and it says, uh, verse 8, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by the sea. Uh, and that's how Esau Edom, Esau Edom gained their success, okay, which is their blessing at this time through their sword, okay, through their military, their technology, their draconian measures. Okay, colonizing. Okay, we know our, we already know how you know America was gained. Okay, under them or through them by the enslavement of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay, and all throughout different parts of the earth. Okay, has they have um, conquered. Okay, through democracy policy, like I say, the military. Okay, and everything that they have gained is by ill-gotten gain. And it says. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by the sea, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So now we come to the point of the transition of power, man. Okay, because Esau, Edom, it's the end of the world. Meaning the end of an age, the end of rulership. Second Edges chapter 6, verse 6. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone. And that's good. Hey, there you go. Showing that Yahweh Bashim al Shah ruleth in the kingdom of men, okay? That he set up kingdoms. And through none other, by me also they shall be ended, and by none other, okay? Then I answered and said, What shall be the pardon of the sunder of the times, and when shall be the end of the first, and the beginning of it that follow? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, and when Jacob and Esau was born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, representing eventually when Yahweh Shai returned, he's going to take Esau out of power, and thus the nation of Israel being joint heirs. And it says, For Esau is the end of the world, the end of this age, okay, the current rulership that Esau is on in the power seat. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. Okay, so now we come into the time of how was Shai King is about to be established? And how do we know? Because we're coming to the end of our captivity. And it starts with the nation of Israel waking up through this word, by the way, the street ministry or the prophets, okay, on the highways and byways, and his word being pushed on, on the internet. Okay. Lamentation chapter 4, verse 17. As for, no, no, uh, 21. Lamentation chapter 4, verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of us. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. Now we're seeing their exposure. Okay, and that cup representing the Lord's judgment. Okay. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. 
He would visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He would discover thy sins. Okay, so now we're coming to the point of the end of our captivity. And the only ones that's going to be delivered as we're approaching Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, is the elect. And as we in this current captivity, the Lord has put the curses on us, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 16 through, through 68. But the Lord going to put those curses on our enemies, start with the Edomites, okay, when they when these nations go into captivity. And that's, oh, now I get into the scriptures that I don't, you know, have written down or uh, bookmark. But that's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 7. And the Lord, Yahweh Bashim al Shai, thy God, will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. So once again, man, when it comes to the transition of power, the new rulership, okay, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim al Shai is going to put the curses on our enemies, start with the Edomites, man. Okay? Let's get another one. Um, like I said, they're going to they're go into captivity and we're going to rule over them. Let me see. Um, let me get this. I read Ecclesiastes chapter one. I mean chapter ten, verse one and eight. Um, here we go, right here. Daniel chapter two, verse forty-four. And in the days of these kings, shall Yahweh Bashim al Shai, a heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. And so these for you Christians, or your average people out here in the world. Okay, claiming that you believe in the Bible, thinking that, for, that is for all nations, or salvation for all nations. So when the kingdom come, which is going to be here on the earth, okay, you know they're going to uh, the only nation that's going to nation that's going to be top tier rulers, all the Israelites, man, okay, and these heathens is going to go beneath us, okay. So that's why I say it should not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Okay, so an everlasting kingdom. So that's it on that one. Let's get this. Um, and so once Yahweh Shah return, okay, all the kingdoms are going to be subdued up under Yahweh Shah. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sound, and there was a great voice in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of a, and of his anointed, okay, Yahweh Shai, and he shall reign forever and forever, okay, and that's going into when the Lord delivered um, the elect, because the elect is joint heirs, and that's the number that we're striving to be part of, man, us that has been called. Okay, the reward that the Lord gonna give us, us that endure to the end, first of all gonna be salvation. Then during the time of the Lord delivering the elect, okay, um, on uh, um, the Lord is gonna change the bodies of the elect by the way of the Lord beaming into the <clears throat> beaming the elect up into those chariots, and <clears throat> the Lord gonna shed the bodies <clears throat> or change the bodies of the elect, okay, from the elect being going from mortal. Okay, which the, which the word mortal means to die, to immortal, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, going to that. <clears throat> and when Yahweh Shai changed the elect body into immortality, that's going to issue into the, the new covenant, being in the elect's inward part, the law, statutes, and commandments, okay? And that's going to eventually lead to when Yahweh Shai return, okay, the Lord going to send the elect back here down on the earth, Okay, to take over. Okay, after the, the smoke cleared from the nuclear destruction. And that's why I may mention these elites and the heathen nation that remain at that time, they're gonna go into captivity. Okay, but the elect, starting with the elect of the nation of Israel, is joint heirs, okay, with Yahweh Shah. Um this is uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. Bashimia was shot. Okay, so it's going into the how we know that we're Israelites because we fit the curses. Okay, even though history proved, secular history proved that we're the Israelites. Okay, and also when it comes to the Israelite foreigners, okay, you got Israelites scattered amongst these heathen nations. 
that may take on the appearance of another nation due to the curses that were scattered amongst them. Okay, but those that's of uh, the spirit of power, Yahweh by Shemel Shai, they're Israelites, man. And when Yahweh Shai returned, as I may mention, to change the the makeup or the body of the the bodies, okay, of the elect, those that look like heathen nations, okay, uh, uh Israel, they're gonna be changed, okay. All Israel gonna be changed, okay. Just to put that point out, okay. But it's all spiritual. Verse seventeen, and if if children, then heirs and heirs heirs of Yahweh and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, if so be that we suffer with him. That we may be glorified together. Be also glorified together. And that's going into the elect being delivered. And eventually being joint heirs. The rule with Yahweh Shai. Like I say the two thirds. They're going to come back in the kingdom. And they're going to be part of the inheritance of rulership too. But right now it starts with the, the elect. Okay. Okay. And like I make mention. Um, Revelation 21. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, going into this current rulership, okay? Because right now we're in Esau, Edom, rulership, which represent his heaven. Okay, I read earlier, 2nd Edge chapter 6, 6 through 9, how Esau is the end of the world, end of an age, okay, rulership. So this is Esau, Edom, current rulership, right along with the rest of these heathen nations, okay? So that's what it's going into, and it says, for the first heaven and the first earth pass away. Okay, not meaning that the Lord is going to destroy the whole entire earth and create a new earth. Okay, it's representing rulership. Okay, and it says, and there was no more sea, and the sea representing the nations. Okay, these other nations. Okay, so they ain't going to have no more power. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of the heaven, like I make mention, once the Lord delivered the elect. And at a certain time going to come, a period of time going to come, the Lord going to allow the elect and Yahweh Shai, okay, eventually to come back down here on the earth to take over, okay, starting with Jerusalem, okay, out of Israel, okay, we're going to take over the whole planet earth, man, and some. And it says, coming down out of um, heaven, uh, prepare as a bride for her husband, okay, so this is going to win. The aftermath of the destruction of the, when it comes to the nuclear war, that's going to lead into Yahweh Shai kingdom. Okay. So let's get this. Let me see. Um, and the is going to be joint heirs. This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. But that which ye have already, already hold fast till I come. And that's going into us that's in the faith. Okay. That's in this calling. Hopefully to be chosen, so we got the whole fast, okay? Because it's going to be reward, uh, be a reward, and I went into it. And he that come overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So I guess the the, the Christians and these um, Bible believers skip this part, okay? When they trying to come up against the Hebrew Israelites, even the Hebrew Israelites themselves claiming that all nations can be saved, okay? Now the Lord making a separation, and it always been that way. Okay, and it says to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter. Potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. And I leave the imagination up to yourself. Okay, just imagine a, a rod of iron, okay, hitting a vessel of, of, of a potter, okay, a vase. Okay, so that show you this. This is symbolic for the Lord bringing judgment. On these heathen nations, and the Lord gonna give the judgment, okay, on um, when it's being called, okay, to the the Israelites, okay, to handle judgment on the earth, and these nations gonna you know be judged for what they did to us and all the wickedness they had always been doing, okay, starting with the Edomites, man. Um, cause in that time ain't gonna be as uh, these heathen nations like the boasts and. Exalt their false gods, they idols, they hedonistic customs. Now in that time it's gonna be Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, that the only power stand alone. Okay. And they're gonna know that. Because in our kingdom, they're gonna have to follow our ways, man. Uh, let me see. Um matter of fact, since I made mention, Isaiah chapter 2. 
verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord house going into the kingdom. Okay. The word mountain represent government. Okay. So the, the government body start with 144,000 to one third. And as a whole, the nation of Israel under the rule of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay. And David, King David being the head up under Yahweh Shai. Okay. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. Okay. In another way saying, the elect too is the house of David. Okay. And shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above, above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Unto it. Okay. Going into, we're going to rule over these heathen nations. Okay. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go into the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the power of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways and we will walk in the paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law. And the word of Yahweh Bashim al from Jerusalem. Okay, and that's the point I want to get. So in our kingdom, they're going to follow our ways. Okay, and if they go against our ways, the Lord going to bring judgment upon them. And now he's going to do that by the way of us, the nation of Israel. Okay. Let me get this. Um, like I say, it's starting with these elites, man. They're going to go into captivity. Okay, as they're going to be in their retreats. Matter of fact, let me get this. Revelation chapter 6, verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it what is rolled together, going into the nuclear missiles. Okay. And it's going into the, um during that time, these elites and these heathens, they have the capability, they're going to go into their retreats. And it says, and every mountain and islands will move out of their places. Okay, going into the nuclear destruction. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bound man, every free man, hide them, hid themselves in the dens, in the rocks of the mountains. Okay, and going into their retreats, their bunkers. Okay, they they got on the ground, they they got into the mountains. Okay, space stations, the under underwater cities. Okay. And they ain't going to be down there alone, these elites. They're going to have service with them. Okay, they're going to have protection with them. Okay, and that's why when, you know, the Lord sent his men back down on the earth, hey, we're going to have that spiritual power as well. Okay, the full capability of the spiritual power, man. Okay, the, you know, the, the takeover, as we like to say, the Jacob. Okay, because once Yahweh Shai reign, that's it. Okay, and he and, and said to the mountains, verse 16, and said to the mountains, and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to abide? So once again, the elites gonna go into their um retreats, okay? And these heathen nations, okay, they're gonna remain, they're gonna be reserved for captivity. Um uh, let me get um Amos. Let Amos Amos 9 and 1 And I saw standing upon the altar And he said smite the lintel of the door That the post may shake And cut them in the head All of them going into Starting with these elites Okay Hey come once Yahweh Shah destroyed America And make his second coming Hey that's going to be it man Okay and I said time and time and I will slay the last of them with the sword, okay, the elites and the heathens that escape. And he that flee of them shall not flee away. And he that escape of them shall not be delivered. Okay, so you're going to have, you know, like I say, you're going to have heathens being judged in this up and coming Third World War. But you're going to have some remain, okay, just to be reserved for captivity. Verse 2. And though they dig into hell, the underground bunkers, okay, because the, the word hell doesn't mean they dig into a, a actual place okay as these christians or roman catholics believe okay well hell is a place under the earth where if you do wickedness all your life and you don't accept the lord being your savior okay that you're gonna or you don't accept the, the bible the god of the bible that you're gonna die and go to hell and burn forever okay that's a myth okay hell representing the on the grave okay under the great or uh, the grave the, you know uh, uh when it comes to the earth death 
or, or difficulties, okay? <clears throat> so in this case, when they say do they dig into hell, meaning they underground bunkers, okay? And this shall my hand take them, okay? And the hand representing, uh, eventually, Yahweh Shema was shot, setting up the nation of Israel, okay, to, you know, um, to get them. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 16, okay? And though they climb up into heaven, yeah, they space stations, because they got space station, okay? Out of space retreats. This one I bring will bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of the caramel, okay, you know, like I say, mountains, I will search and take them out dense. And though they be hid from me, from my sight, in the bottom of the sea, as I may mention, or the underwater cities, okay, they have the capability of that, man. Okay, and when we tell you that Esau Edom is was blessed, man, okay, our people just, you know, they don't, you know, they overlook that. They don't know the extent. Okay, the, the power that the Lord gave this man, but now we're at the time that he's going to take it away from him. And it says, and it says, um, though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, this will I command the serpent and he will bite them. Okay, the serpent representing um, um, Le Leviathan, okay, which would which, which, which they describe as the modern day um, Godzilla. Okay, so the Lord got a creation known as Leviathan. Okay, a sea monster. And it might sound fetch to the average person, hey, but this word is only for the hopeful elect anyway, man. And we about to shoot, we about to see the power of Yahweh Bashima was shot. Okay, but once again, the Lord said he's going to use the nation of Israel as his hand. Okay, matter of fact, let me get what well, that's Ezekiel. Chapter 25, verse on. Um, so, just going to the execution of the Lord bringing upon these heathens. Okay, and I'm going to get to Esau Edom because he's going to be primary number one. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 12. Thus say the Lord God, Yahweh Shai, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah. By taking vengeance, okay, Judah represent the head tribe of Israel, which are the so-called Negroes today, and which is also the tribe that our Lord stand out of, okay, from the, from David, okay. And it says, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and have greatly offend and venge yourself upon them, okay. We see the 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 you know the the, the history of the. Um, we see the history of um when it comes to the you know the long tensions between so-called blacks and white man. Okay, so it said continue on, and it says, and therefore this say the Lord God, I will also scratch out my hand upon Edom. Okay, like I say, okay, the Lord hand represent His people. And will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Timon, and they of the Dan shall fall by the sword, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people. So, so here we go. The hand of my people, okay, Israel, starting with the elect. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger, and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, say the Lord, Yahweh Bashimah Shai. Okay, so that's starting with the elites, as they're gonna be in their retreats, man. Matter of fact, let me get this. Um, what's that? Um, Psalms. Chapter 1, verse 1, verse 1, verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Okay, the saints representing the Israelites. Okay. Um, this is on um, Psalms 148 and 14. He also exalt the horn of his people. Okay, the horn represent power once again. And the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel, or people near to himself, or near to him, praise ye Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So once again, the, the saints represent Israelites. Starting with the elect. Psalms 149, verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Okay, that's going into the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, we're going to be comfortable. Okay, we ain't going to be worrying about captivity or worrying about our enemy pursuing us or taking over. Okay, 
Now, once Yahweh Shah return, that's it. Okay? And the step, when the Lord Yahweh Shah established the kingdom, that's going to be our comfort. Okay? You know, to the fullest. Okay? In the, you know, when it comes to physical rulership. Let the high praises of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. And that's going to be literally. Okay? So we're going to have a sword. Okay? An iron rod. A scepter. Okay? And we're going to have that power. Spiritual power. Okay? Limited power, man. Okay, what you see in these, you know, comments. Okay, we're gonna have all that and more. Okay, you know, I made mention earlier, man. When we rule, baby, we're gonna rule the whole entire earth. And I say, and I say, and some. Now, nah, ain't gonna be and some. It's gonna be and more. Okay, so excuse me for that. Okay, because we're gonna rule the whole universe under Yahweh Bashim Shah. Okay, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. To bind their kings and chains, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetter and irons. Okay, so this going into symbolically, okay, slavery, okay, captivity, okay, physically captivity, okay. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all the saints. Praise ye, Yahweh Bashim Okay, so that's their future. Let me get this. Well, that's Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 22. And this said the Lord God, Yahweh Shema Shai. Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles. Okay, going into the original heathens. Okay. And set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring their sons in their arms and daughters. And their daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. Okay, going to the heathen nations. That we're going to rule over them, okay? And they're going to be subject unto us, service unto us. And kings shall be their nursing fathers, and their queens their nursing mothers, okay? So all of them are going to captivity, okay? We're going to rule over all of them, not just the men, okay? The men, women, and children of these heathen nations. And they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust off thy feet. And that's not talking literally, okay? Because you got Israelites out there that might use this scripture to you know, have Edomites bow down to them and kiss their feet or their shoes or boots, whatever. Okay. Now nah, that's not going into that. Okay. This is going into, they're going to be totally subject unto us. They're going to be beneath us, man. And we're going to rule over them. And it says, and thou shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashim al Shai, for they should not be ashamed that wait for me. Okay. And that's going into the elect eventually. Okay. Okay, everything that these heathens have right now, they're going to belong to us. Okay, which is, it was already set up for us to rule and have all things subject unto us anyway, man. Okay, including these heathens. All the precious resources, okay, or, you know, that these heathens have now, hey, they're going to be, hey, once again, the, trans, trans, the power is going to be translated to us. Okay, the earth, okay. Because it's ours rightfully anyway, as our in heritage. Um, <clears throat> so that's it on that. <clears throat> now I get ready to close. Let's get Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay. So slavery. And who led us in captivity? Okay. The, the Edomites. Start with the Edomites of these heathen nations. Okay. Psalms the 83rd chapter go into that. And it says, And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Okay. So it's going into judgment, man. Here is the patient and the faith of the saints. Hey, they go to the saints again. Okay. Israelites, man. And that's what we patiently waiting for. Okay, us of the hopeful elect. And I'm just coming out the scriptures, man. Because now you come out with certain, now they want to, you know, you come out with certain topics that can be controversy down. They want to, you know, strike your channel, hit you with the H word. Okay, yeah, but now I'm coming back, you know, to you heathens, man. Okay, when it comes to judgment. All before, when it was the was the time for the Negro, Latino, Native Americans, you know, to be on the bottom, which we still on the bottom, 
But we went through all those horrific times and, you know, which we about to approach Jacob Chump. But all before past history, the Negro man ain't nothing but three-fifths of a man, okay? We look down upon, okay, but now the Lord coming back full throttle when it comes to this word exposing it and the judgment that's about to come on you heathens, the payback, man. Okay, so now, now, now they don't want to drink of the cup. Okay, I read an earlier lamentation, chapter 4 and 21. Let me get this and I'll close. Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse um, 16. And it says, Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So all our adversaries, all the enemies, starting with Esau, Edom, man. Okay, all these heathen nations going into captivity. Okay, and it's going to be a spoil, man. Okay, and they're going to be judged. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Say the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai, because they call thee an outcast, Saying, this is Zion, who no man seeketh after her. Yeah, like I say, for years, they looked down upon Israel. Okay, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, still to this day. Okay, even though when this truth coming out, they still can't comprehend or accept that we're the Israelites, man. Even two-thirds of our people. Okay, because we may mention that they, he the nation, going to captivity. Okay, our people don't even want to hear that, man. Okay, because they so, they got Stockholm Syndrome. Okay, but they still believe it in Christianity. Okay, but if they had any understanding of the scriptures, okay, they'll understand what the what the Bible speak of. But that's all through the spirit and power you have by Shemel Shah. Okay, because the only way you can understand if the spirit is upon you, okay, through the spirit of the Lord, man. Okay, and that's given unto the election eventually. Okay. So once again, man, these nations call us an outcast, okay, looking looking for us not to never, you know, come up. But now the Lord is making it known, okay, the exposure of the Edomites, okay, and these heathen nations through the scriptures and the uprise of Israel, man, okay, that's why we can see now they're ready to, to ban the Bible or come with um, censorship, okay, which is going to lead to the famine of the word, man. And once they bring the famine of the word, which is the spirit and power you have by Shema Shai, okay, when they regulate the internet or when the Lord remove his word or when the uh, uh, Lord remove his men off the highways and byways, and that's when it really going to uh, move uh, quick, man, okay? Especially when these devils push that MOTB, okay? But, uh, you know, to sum it up, when it comes to the kingdom of Israel, which is by default, or which is the kingdom of Yahweh, which is by default the kingdom of Israel, okay? In the near future, when that when that come, or when that take place, the heathen nations, they're going to go into captivity. So I'm going to go ahead and end the lesson here. And I pray that the lesson may edify. Until next time, Lord willing, Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom.